update. Just when I didn't think it could get any worse, it is now currently hailing. So I not only have a water feature, but I also have a snow feature in the greenhouse as well. I put tape on here until I can seal it with silicone tomorrow. It's kind of working. <laughs> okay, today is the day. Today is the day we revamp this greenhouse and we make it brand new. Right, buddy? Peace is right. All right, so first stop, demolition. All right, hit number one. So, general backstory for you. I moved in with my partner about two years ago at this point. And upon moving in, I noticed he had this beautiful greenhouse. Well, not so beautiful right now, but I said, you know what? It needs some TLC. It needs love. It's disgusting. There was holes in it. We found a squirrel in it. We found a dead bird in it. So I knew it was time to give it a bit a much needed facelift. And also our motivation was bulk pickup in our town was happening over the weekend. And we wanted to get rid of these nasty sidewalls and not be stuck trying to get rid of them ourselves. So I figured, let me demolition this. And like any house project, that was the best part of it. And that's what I was most excited for. All right, skylight number one. And to be honest, I didn't think it was going to be that big of a project. I figured just the roof and the walls would have to be replaced, but the frame itself from the inside seemed pretty secure. And it wasn't until I'm actually pulling down the walls here and I'm looking and I'm realizing, no, uh, the front is completely rotted and the frame needs to be all replaced too. Uh, so that really wasn't exactly in the plan. And speaking of plan and budget, this was a project I thought that would maybe be $100. If that, uh, it, it didn't become $100 at all. And uh, throughout this process, I will start tallying up how much each thing costs, just so this way, if you want to embark in your own little greenhouse journey, you have a realistic picture of it, because uh, I didn't at the time. And now my main mission on day one is to remove the roof and the walls. Now, as you can see, I'm wearing a mask and eye protection because these panels, I have no idea what they're made out of. And every time I break them apart, a bunch of little splinters of who knows what material was flying around in the air. Uh, I, want, I think they might be fiberglass, but I'm not 100% sure. Either way, the roof had to go. And also, when I'm taking the panels off, I am realizing that there are wooden little, like, groove holders that were holding these in place. So as I'm going through, I'm also removing those as well. And the panels were actually bolted in underneath the flashing on the roof. So this was a little tricky to get out, but I am using the hammer ever so slightly to start pushing up the flashing because ideally I wanted to reuse it since I didn't want to have to buy anything unnecessarily. Now, I don't want to bore you with the entire process of removing the roof and the walls, but here you can see, bam, fast forward, I did it, it looks great, the flashing's up, so this way I could reuse it and bolt it back down. And at this point, I'm feeling good. Because I have the roof up, I have the supporters in place. Now, here's one thing I wish I knew from the beginning. I thought I had to pre-drill holes throughout the roof before I actually put screws into them, and the screws I used were watertight roof screws, but you do not. You can just go straight in with the screw itself. Don't waste your time trying to pre-drill a hole because it takes that much longer to change your drill bit every single time. And let me tell you, that was probably one of the most annoying parts. But aside from that, I feel good. The roof is up. I knew that it was supposed to rain actually the following day, so having the roof up was the most important part to me. Now, my friends, this is another mistake I made. So I only ended up buying four panels on the roof initially and one additional one that I figured we could use as a long window on the left wall because I was trying to be cost effective. This meant I was going to build the rest of the wall with wood. And at this point on day one, it started to get dark. I knew I had to put something up on the walls because it was going to rain the next day. So I ended up tacking up some wood temporarily and I put the window in the middle. And let me just brace you. It looks like a witch shed. It looks so crazy. So this is mistake number one. Ooh, at this point, it was my main concern just to tack up some wood temporarily, so this way it would block rain out. But blocking rain out didn't work, and I woke up to this the next morning. <laughs> oh, this is funny. <laughs> As you can see, we have some fine craftsmanship here. I actually got this greenhouse imported from Italy. All original rustic detailing, coming with ripped garbage bag, 
followed by acrylic balance on multiple things, soda can, bowls for cooking. You could also reuse it as potting. Uh, I wanted, personally, a water feature to come in through the middle of the roof. I really like when, you know, rain just comes splashing in. Keeps you hydrated and refreshed. Uh, you know, you don't have to worry about having dry skin here. Bro. What the? Mother. Brother. Hey guys, look at this new waterfall I just installed in the greenhouse. It's really great. I always wanted a water feature to be going. I find it very relaxing. If you're getting too hot, you could get cooled off. Also, if you feel like you have dry skin, you could get a nice little facial mist. Clearly something's wrong with the roof. Um, either it's that, or I put a waterfall feature in the middle of the greenhouse. One or the other, I really don't know what it is, but I'm gonna figure it out. <laughs> yeah. Update. Just when I didn't think it could get any worse, it is now currently hailing. So I not only have a water feature, but I also have a snow feature in the greenhouse as well. I paid extra for it. I put tape on here until I can seal it with silicone tomorrow. It's kind of working, aka it's making a waterfall. But the hail has I can't lie. Oh my god. Hi home improvers, I'm Billy and I'm going to show you how to not build a greenhouse this way. But I mean this is all clearly intentional. To the left you can see I have a natural ice snow cone display. I want my I want my plants to be very regulated. I don't know if I want them to be too hot or too cold, but either way we have our ice feature here. And then in the middle we have a lovely waterfall that's streaming down. You know, it's perfect to keep the humidity up with these precious plants. And you know, it's really coming along great. For tips and tricks, stay tuned. <laughs> Jesus Christ, that's ah! Ass out there too. So after the mighty flood, nothing started to dry out. I did make another trip to Home Depot. Okay, this is trip number two at this point to buy more plastic panels to replace the wood on the walls and to also buy more two by fours because now I had to frame out a majority of the frame on the side. At first I tried to use the existing wood, but then eventually I was like, nope, I have to go in and just replace the entire thing. So here I'm thinking, okay, this is looking good. I'm taking a sigh of relief. I don't feel like I got in over my head anymore because I'm like, this looks damn good in my opinion. We've been rained up twice and we've had leaks that have came in from the middle here. So I went in with some foam, luckily sealed that up. Uh, went in with some foam over there. I know very pretty at the moment. I will clean that up eventually. Uh, up next on the list is I want to reinforce these walls, right? This one over here and this one. I'm gonna go in with some foam for insulation with a few planks of wood. And then I'm going to stain all of these beams to help protect them a little more. Now, I learned a lesson yesterday, unfortunately, with these panels. This one I actually did correct by having this top panel basically be overlapping this bottom one here, because this is where they meet. Each panel is eight feet long, and this is where they basically overlap. On this side, I had it right, which was perfect, so there was no water coming in. But unfortunately, on this side, I had the this bottom panel on the outside so the water was falling from the top and it was just starting to drain on the inside here so as you can see it's a little messy because i went in with some flexi seal and then i realized i didn't need to do that i just needed to rearrange the panel so in the rain yesterday i went on the ladder first i was too lazy to get the ladder balanced on an old tire and unscrewed it and then made it flush so this way the rain now is going down and there was a big old gap here because I had these panels on facing the wrong way. A rookie move, I know. So basically in between, there was a big old gap in between every one of these. So I took it apart and I installed it correctly. So now, next time it rains, knock on wood, it should be good. And we won't have water damage all throughout here, like you can see. I did not anticipate the entire frame on the bottom to be completely shop basically so as i was taking it apart the wood was essentially just breaking so as you can see i replaced all the beams here and these little support beams as well 
Now here's an outside view and I wanted to show this because I made two mistakes. Aside from the big divot in the middle where there's a hole, I also screwed the aluminum panels on top of the plastic panels when re in reality I should have done the opposite. The reason being is when water is going down the wall now, it is going to seep through that little gap there and it is just going to come inside of the greenhouse. It is now about three hours since it's been raining and I am saddened to say we have a minimal leak. So that's why I had to go in and then fix it again by removing the panels and then doing it the right way because at first I thought, hmm, could I just go in with some silicone? I was like, no, do it the right way, take it off and fix it. And I started to have the issue with the gap in the middle because the panels themselves were not long enough for the entire wall. So that meant another trip to Home Depot. If you don't know me, uh, just know I don't like Home Depot that much. I mean, it's okay, but I don't like going again and again and again. Okay, so that was trip number three. I am going to stop things right now and close up part one of this video, but check back because I will be uploading a part two and potentially a part three of this video as well, depending on how many more issues come up, to be honest. If you guys want to follow along, don't forget to subscribe, and I will see you during the next video. Thanks for watching.